So today we have Andre David and Sarah Varela. Uh, Sarah Varela is a distinguished researcher at the University of Vigo, Spain, where she leads the MAPAS lab, a paleoecology and paleobiogeography uh, lab on paleoecology and paleobiogeography. In particular, in her lab, she pioneers the study of deep time geographic diversification dynamics, and she holds a PhD from the Museum of Natural Sciences in Madrid and has worked as a postdoc in Spain, Czech Republic, and Germany before returning to Spain with an ERC starting grant. So, hello, my name is Sara Varela. Uh, first, uh, also thanks to invite me here. Um, I completely agree with Amber about all the things that uh, she was saying, uh, about the importance of, uh, yeah, understanding all the things that you are learning in this process of becoming a scientist or something like that. Um, and um, I also prepare a, a short talk about um, also my personal feelings. And again, Amber was also saying this, like uh, she's working in France, so she knows better France. I was working in Spain and also Germany and, and other places, so I will talk more about these uh, kind of countries. And I guess uh, this kind of topic is like uh, talking about uh, how to make a successful company or something like that. So. Being a scientist, you can be a very different type of scientist. So we will talk about our experience, then you need to think about your own framework, your own feelings, what you like, what, what do you want to do, and, and you can have a small company like running a shop in your neighborhood and you can be really happy, or you can try to run Google that you need different things for the different, yeah kinds of, of careers that you can you can choose. So my career was a, a bit bump, bumpy also, like uh, I think everybody. Uh, so for me, it was like eight years to do the PhD because I changed teams and, and it was a bit messy. And also I, this, this first part, I think is the most sensitive for everybody because you need to learn uh, a lot of skills and this is tough if you are alone so again this will depend on the, the team that you are working with and, and and a lot of things that are personal and if you have duties or not or family or not or, or a lot of things so this this um, we can talk about this later and, and we can uh, we can talk about uh, different things in the round table then for me uh, after finishing the phd everything was was much smoother in in relation to to my job so i knew my job so the only problem and i put here like only was finding money um I, I just hit the the crisis. So in Spain, we they ended all the the funds for going abroad, or it was really we faced really strong cuts in science, meaning a lot of people we decided to went out, and uh, there are hundreds of postdocs working abroad because in Spain we have very few opportunities. So um, all these things that you are here are different postdocs that I had and all these things um, I didn't choose them. It was the only option that I have at every moment. Okay, so, so this kind of choosing your career path, I was kind of swimming and just going with the flow and and, and done. And um, this... Um, Blue things are the moments that uh, I had no money. Uh, so it was kind of big stress in these moments. And these crosses are like maternity leaves. And this here is when uh, I was about to also uh, have nothing. And then I uh, two postdocs uh, was accepted. So it was very cool. So I had like a lot of years. So I decided to apply for a starting grant and I got it. So now I am... I guess, I hope, I am going to enter a more stable phase where I can make my own love and be happy and blah, 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 blah. So for you, um, I, I am going to talk about skills that you are learning now because you are, you are working in academia. I guess you are doing a PhD or, or also like a, a young postdoc. 
And then I am going to talk about funding options because I guess for everybody this is a key thing. So science and everybody is saying this is a marathon, meaning you need time, meaning you need money. And for sure it's not the same and your options are not going to be the same if, uh, I don't know, if you have kids or not, and if, if you're a woman or not, if like different things are going to happen or if you have money or if you have a partner that has a job and then you can have periods of time without having a job. So all the things like, and uh, each of you, we are, you're going to have different, um, yeah, um, things in your life that are going to make this path easier or more complex. So let's see, the, the skills that you learn in science, I guess you, you, you already know these things, but at the beginning, I put this in like in a time temporal framework. At the beginning, it's all about data gathering. So you are going to learn about your species, your study area, because you go to the field and you pick some individuals or whatever you are doing. You can also learn how to develop some protocol to grow whatever thing, for instance, in, in a greenhouse or something like that. So you need to do some experiments and, and to define like which kind of data you need. Or you, another thing that is happening now is there are a lot of um, open access databases about biodiversity. So you can, uh, the only thing that you need to do to gather in data is go to your computer and just download tons of data. Normally, this first uh, uh, period of gathering data is doable. It doesn't require a lot of training. So in general, people like and enjoy this, this uh, part. In these moments of your thesis, um, if you go to the field with different people, maybe you can set your network of colleagues and collaborations. You can travel. You can have a lot of adventures. Uh, and you are starting to understand the field of research. So you're scratching the surface. Then you need to clean the data uh, or process the data. Maybe the things that you got in the field, they are not enough and you go to the lab and you take whatever, more measures of soil or anything that you are doing. And then you need a lot more protocols and techniques to do this analysis or if you have for instance, uh, tons of millions of rows of uh, DNA, whatever, genes, uh, occurrence records, whatever things that you downloaded, you need to clean the data. And this can mean learning how to program because if you have a database that is huge, you cannot do it one by one. So here there is a, a, an also a um, learning curve about how to clean the data, how to, to have a good data to test your hypothesis. Then you run the analysis. Uh, so you need to learn about the stats, programming, maybe if this is more complex or you require some modeling. And also you need to learn how to visualize your results. Uh, so you are, you are, I guess you all know all these things, but all these things, my impression is students are, or, uh, or myself also, I was really concerned about this uh, learning. So all these things are scary. How to program is scary. How to learn stats is scary. Maybe making plots is not that scary, but it also requires time. And, you need to, and, and now people are making super fancy plots. So you also need to learn about, I don't know, palettes and colors and how to make a nice uh, yeah, a visualization of your ideas and your results. But but this should be really, this is not going to, yeah, to be forever. You learn these things. Well, you need to, of course, uh, things change and you need to keep learning all, all your life, but uh, this is not that complex, okay? So if you are still in this uh, phase of you need to learn about methods and things, this is not forever. You, at some point you learn this th these things. The first, um, um, data gathering things normally are more repetitive, so it's more it's faster to learn these things. This is a bit more slowly, you need, it's more complex, so you need more time, but you are going to learn. So no worries, no stress about this. I don't know anybody that quitted science because they, I don't know, they, they didn't know how to do an ANOVA or something like that. So normally you quit science because you don't find money. It's not that science is difficult, but science has 
really few options as careers, okay? So, and then the last thing that you need to learn is about communicate results. So write papers, this is very important. You need to finish the things that you start and also talking conferences. So you need to uh, workshops and you need, you need to explain yourself. So all these things are soft skills, like manage your time, get things done, and you need to be willing to learn that this is very important. Also, you're going to learn about lab field skills, stats, programming, and more importantly, you need to learn about your topic. You need to learn the theory about your topic, what is the current framework to be able, you understand, yeah? to be able to learn um, to ask good questions. And this is super important. You need to, if you want to become a PI, a, a, um, to have a stable job in academia, it will be important if you try to, to, to be, yeah, use your imagination and try to, to think outside of the box and try to, to make good um, questions. Okay, and then writing and talking, and talking skills. For me, this uh, the the black things here um, are the things that are important if you want to apply for um, scientific um, a postdoc or a PI position, and the red skills are very important if you want to uh, to apply for a technician um, um, job. So the careers that I think that they are related to academia, but we can add more things in the discussion is being a postdoc and be a PI of a lab, being a technician in different things in a lab, like programmer, doing GIS or digitalizing collections in museums. Now this is huge and all the museums want to digitalize all their collections. Maybe also make databases about their collections and also museum curator is about taking care of a collection of amphibians or reptiles or whatever they have in the collection. Some of these um, uh, positions also require research, so they are going to count that you can do research also. And I put here inside outside academia because this is kind of in between. Uh, so outreach, science, communication uh, is kind of in between. Scientific illustration, I know people working in, uh, so you can be a freelance working as a scientific uh, illustrator. Project manager is also um, yeah, a career path. This career path we can talk later is not that stable also. You depend on PIs getting projects. So there is no permanent project manager positions. And then you can also work in conservation agencies or NGOs. So problems that I think we face in academia. First, the learning curve. Normally you start and, and you have this uh, unconscious uh, naive uh, happiness uh, feelings that you think you can do everything and then you go to more a depressing time when you realize that there is a lot to learn you need to do the effort to try to learn and then you understand and and you know your job and this is super cool feeling uh, and you feel like a superhero and then maybe with time you enter this unconscious competence state where you think things are easy because you know how to do it and you forgot or you forget that it, it took time to learn all these things. And about the jobs, what is the problems that we face in academia, the stability? The career planning is, is crazy. You cannot plan your career or is very unlikely that you are going to be able to really plan your career even very skilled people so it's like if you want to be a football player in real madrid not everybody is going to have a really as as amber was saying a really um, lineal wonderful flowers and butterflies path the normal thing is you do whatever you can and you end up in whatever place it was possible also, salaries are not good. Uh, you cannot be here because you want money. And this is something that I, I'm sure you also know. For instance, in Spain, if you go and do the um, oppositiones, like a secondary, like high school teacher, you are going to have a better salary than starting in the CSIC. So it's like the CNRS uh, or working at the university. So you shouldn't be here because of stability or because of... Uh, money or something like that. You should be here because you you are curious. You like this kind of uh, 
um, you like science, you 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 want to. I don't know. There are other things, and I am sure you also know all these things. That because you are still uh, here and you you are listening to this kind of talk, so so you are passionate and you like these things, and 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 you think you have something to add and something to give um, to science, and 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 this is a nice feeling, and it's it's, it's a fair feeling. And uh, about this uh, precarious world, th this is not just precarious for the people doing the PhD, it's precarious for everybody now. And, and I put this here because uh, now in the US, for instance, uh, like most of the positions at, in universities are not non-permanent. And in the past, it was not like that. So you shouldn't see the professors that are 50 years or something like this is your path. And this is, these are real options because they are not anymore. So, um, yeah, I am 40 now. And for me, this is in September. I might be, the, this is going to be the first time I might be signing a contract that is kind of permanent. It's like a tenure track. So if you are starting, you, ha you are 25 or something like that, realize that this is a long path. Okay. Again, this is a marathon, blah, 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 blah. And I put this. Uh, image here to maybe start a conversation also in the discussion about because yesterday we were you were talking also a lot of people are frustrated and they think like supervisors are not doing enough and they need yeah they, they feel like they need more things and they feel alone and and, and all these feelings are, are, are real and and I had this too but at some point I think it's important that you understand that and Amber was also saying this that you are not a student anymore. So, so take take um, and this is not a bad thing. Like you are free to do whatever you want, and you're the responsible of your career. So if your supervisor is not doing correctly, change it. Go to another place. You are not tied to this person. And for me, for instance, when I I, I, I for me it took that long uh, the PhD because I was in a really bad. A team, for instance, and it took me like four years to take the courage to leave. And now, seeing from with perspective, this was a mistake because I thought maybe if I change, uh, this is going to be terrible, and these people people are going to hate me, or I don't know. A lot of things are are yeah uh, inside of, um, and you are starting, so you you are not sure. But but science is not that small, so change if you are not happy just this is your responsibility go away and find another people another and and this is also depending again on you and what is right for you and nobody is there to tell you anything about these kind of things so how to get a stable position in academia uh, it depends on on the country okay and and my suggestion here like uh, if you want stable position try to think in countries that now are investing in science because if you want to do for instance a career now in spain this is going to be really complex say that um, i i am going to give you some resources so for me evaldir is a really nice um repository of uh, jobs the layout is terrible is but it's ugly but if you click in this kind of buttons here like postdocs and jobs they have this this kind of layout with all the the positions and it's really nice and this this place is the repository of postdocs and, and people that have projects uh, need somebody a postdoc for working in fishes in australia with this kind of things this salary blah 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 so this is not the uh, grants that you apply. These are positions that people are opening. So this is kind of more easy to apply because you don't need to ask for a project or like write something. You just need to ask for the position and tell the person that you are super cool for this position. Uh, if you go for your own uh, money, if you go for go for your own money in Spain, you have different calls. You have the national calls like Juan de la Cierva, and, and that they are going to change the name, I think, and Ramón y Cajal, that are the um, the national more um, uh, longer calls that we have. Then each university and regions like Comunidades Autónomas, they have their own specific calls. You can go, and you need to check 
because this depends on the year. Maybe they stop at some point, they start, restart. I don't know, Castilla La Mancha is, uh, stop it, but then restart it, and then do they do crazy things depending on the money that they have. So uh, this can be more or less stable depending on a lot of things. And recently, I think it's the second time we have Beatriz Galindo, that is a, a, a position uh, really linked with teaching. And now we have a new one that they are going just fresh new that is going to be open soon for early postdocs. Um, that was, uh, if you just finish it, your PhD now, uh, you can apply for a postdoc to go to another Spanish university. Uh, this is for people uh, studying the bachelor the, who did the PhD in a Spanish university to go to another uh, university to, to do the postdoc. So in Spain, main problem. It's very difficult to have a stability. You can have like one, like Comunidad de Madrid, and then just go to another place, uh, like Alcalá de Henares uh, University, and they go to another place. It's, it's, mm, yeah, you need to be very lucky to be able to have a flat and uh, friends and, and make your network and for a long period. At least this was my experience. Maybe now it's changing, and I think recently it's changing because, for instance, Comunidad de Madrid was was um, had now more grants, so maybe this is an option, yeah, for the future. Realize that things are changing really fast um, in in science, and the things that the the career path when I started and the options were not are not the same now. So I can tell you about my experience, about what was to get a job uh, and to become permanent in the last 15 years. But maybe you are facing like the next 10 years, so I'm not sure what is going to happen in the next 10 years. Uh, in my experience, I would really suggest you to go to Germany. Why? Because they are investing a lot in science. So you ask if you are working uh, outside, so if, if you are not in Germany, you can apply for a post at Humboldt. This is a two-year postdoc that is 2,600 euros per month, and they give you research money, which is a lot of money, and they give you all at the beginning of the, um, of the grant, and you can do whatever with this money. This is a very short project. It's a five-page project, and this is, should be in the first four years after you finish in the PhD. Once you are in Germany, you can apply for the EFG. It's like the CNRS or the uh, CSIC uh, or, or national agencies of, of funding. Uh, sorry, it's like uh, national agencies. Not, not, um, so it's like you can apply for your own position for three years and then expand this for another three years. And this is relatively easy to get. Meaning, it's not Juan de la Cierva, it's not Ramón y Cajal. It's not crazy. You don't need 30 publications. You just need to have something okay uh, meaning if you know your job and you 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 were able to publish things and you know your techniques and the things if you prove that you know your job you are going to get get this money i can tell you it's much more easy everybody that was applying for these things in my lab they got it uh, even they get the um, the reviews and then they change something and then they apply again and they got it in the second round and this is open all the year you just apply and they meet i think three times per year or something and they give you the results this means eight years of stability that i think is very important if you want you can be in one place and you can build your friends and your career and be happy and stable if you aim for the top, there are also other options. And in Germany, they have um, this in the DFG also. And in the Humboldt Foundation, they have uh, like big grants if you want to uh, have your own team for early researchers. Is, this is not like you need to be like amazing, I don't know, 30 publications. No, 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 early researchers. And this is uh, William Foster that is, um, it was in, in the museum in, in Berlin where I, where I was working and he applied for this 1 million euro DFG project and he got it. This is his profile now. So this was one year ago. So it was younger when he applied for this, meaning this is doable, people. This is not something like incredible just for, for I don't know, stars like 
yeah, in Spain we don't have this kind of things. I don't know in France. And then you have in the Alexander von Humboldt, you have the Sofia Kovaleskaya Award that is the same. So up to 1.6 million, five years, and you should be, I think, also for maybe six years after your PhD. You can check this. And you can be from abroad and asking this for going to, to Germany. Switzerland, that is another place that is investing money. You have the Prima Awards, uh, Prima Grants, that is for women in science, and also it's about also 1 million euros and to have your own team. And there is much more, so you can go here to the SNF uh, um, webpage and just check about your where you are and which options they, they give you. Okay, so there are countries that are investing. If you are not in this kind of countries, there you have also Europe, also, of course you have Marie Curie, but you have also this, uh, now I am in this aiming for the top, like making your own team and try to, to have to, to, to have a permanent position. You need to have like a, a more stable five-year grant. So you can apply for the starting grants, consolidator grants and, and these kind of things. This is the starting grant, it's the first that you can apply. This is less than seven years after, after you finish the PhD, it's 1.5 million euros for five years. And if you have kids, you uh, for mothers, you can you have an extension of 18 months per kid. Okay, if you are a father, you have an extension of the paternal leave that you got. And you don't need a science paper. Okay, so I have one starting grant, I told you, and I don't have any science. My personal CV for you to understand um, uh, what I had when I was applying. I have two kids, so I, I was able to span this uh, um, for 36 months. I, I was uh, not in my last uh, chance, but in the I had another one if if not, so it was yeah. Um, but I had a really long career when I was applying for this. Okay, so I was at the end of my career. I know also people that apply at this just after finishing the PhD. So they really balance. It's not the same that you are working for seven years of, as a postdoc as if you are working as a one or two years as a postdoc. Okay, so they 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 balance these kind of things. But also, if you want to apply this really fast, then you need to prove that you are kind of independent. So try to publish your own things alone or something like you need to have a big statement like I can be a PI of a team that this is what they want. So yeah, a lot of papers, some citations, uh, several projects, supervising students and postdoc for eight years. This was my, my things. Again, you're running a marathon, blah, blah, blah. And uh, for me, I was 17 years uh, working as a researcher with uh, no permanent positions and with unemployed lags in the middle. I moved to nine uh, different cities and I moved to from different countries six times. This is a lot of moving. And uh, I am going to end, I think I am not sure <laughs> about this kind of the mental health, take care of yourself. Moving is fun at the beginning, but it's also very stressful uh, because you lose your family, you lose your friends, and you lose your friends each time you move because you build your network and then you change. This is super cool because then you have friends in different places and you understand also science in different countries and also you learn some words or some basic to ask for food in different countries, which is really nice. Um, but uh, also this kind of changing that much also puts you in more vulnerable positions uh, because being alone uh, yeah is is um, if there is a problem you you yeah you don't have friends or 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 you maybe don't understand what is happening and this happens when you change to another culture another country it takes some time to really understand what was what is going on so it's a learning curve also for for the cultural meaning of things and how people behave. So I think this is it. Uh, I hope this was useful and we can talk about all these things later if you want. <laughs>